helps if I put it in gear. All right. Today is start on the waterproofing day. So I brought the sprayer up here. Isn't that a thing of beauty? So I've got to cut all the little ties off, get that off the pallet, and got to get a bucket of uh, dishwashing soap and water and run it through the machine and do some other prep work. Got the first uh, barrel ready to go. There's a ground, see ground to the, when you're using metal barrels, you ground to that while you're spraying. The guys are going around cleaning some of this up uh, before we spray. I see uh, some metal James missed. He'll be sad he missed that. We are going to have a second retaining wall that comes off of that. So it'll be it'll be a short one though. Expectations to be done with this tomorrow afternoon. So that'd be cool. I know everybody's been waiting to see this. Me too. If you watch the shorts, I know some people don't like to watch them, but if you watch the shorts, you saw when this got delivered. I took the instruction manual off and kind of perused through it. It was a plethora of information. Mm -hmm. ready let's see what's this yeah all right get out of there rock you're expensive we need you Let that run for a little bit, come up to operating temperature. You know, see what we got. Woo. Hey, look, it's Construction Materials Group. They're bringing me some rolls of uh, vapor barrier. All right, so that's our vapor barrier. It's Viper 2. I went ahead and got 15 mil. Six mil is the uh, uh, code that I got you know thick stuff so all right somebody that knows what they're doing has showed up we're getting ready to get into something we're gonna prime the pump we'll just make sure everything's plumbed up right we don't have any leaks but this is brand new out of the box the Draco gmax 7900 uh this pump is capable of spraying all of our below grade waterproofing materials as well as even some some higher viscosity products i think the maximum tip size with this pump is a 49 so we're going to be spraying out of a 535 tip with this, but this is, this is what you get. Uh, we got this from Spray Equipment, and uh, they're out of Kansas. They were very accommodating. We were able to get this out here relatively quick. Okay, so this is made to go down into the 55-gallon drums. Yep, this is our dip tube. This is what we'll, we will suck the product out of here, the, the, the wider right here. Um, you can remove the filter if you want. Remove the bung in the drum, dip this in, and it, it's ready to start pumping. This is our, our prime tube. We'll also have this down in there, or we could put it in one of our buckets as we're going. But when we start pumping, we're going to want to prime. So it's going to come shooting out of this, whereas you switch it to spray, it's going to send it through the hook. Um, but that's how we'll start off priming it and then try to push any air that's in the system. We're back to the run. Look at that. So this is the Tough and Dry H8. Um, this is sort of our flagship residential waterproofing membrane here. Uh, this product itself sprayed on, just membrane only, it comes with a 15 year warranty. When you use one of the drainage boards or protection boards, we offer a 30 year warranty. Uh, this product is gonna go on at 60 mils thick, 
and I brought some mill gauges that when we're putting it on, I can show you how to check your thickness. But one of my favorite things about this product is you can visually see when you're built up to about 55, 60 mils. It'll create sort of a ripple on the surface that looks like the uh, the top of a candy bar, to, for lack of a better better term. But that's how you know when, when you start seeing that ripple, you're at 60 mils, and I'm excited to show you about that here soon. So this is the sausage gun. So we're gonna be using sausage packs of the uh, little sealant for any little gaps and cracks that we ended up with between the foam. We'll fill that first before we start spraying. So that's what's inside the tube. Yep, this is our Dimonic 100. It's a uh, high performance polyurethane sealant. Um, this is a moisture cure product, one of our one of our biggest selling products, great stuff, can be used for a wide variety of stuff. But what we're going to be doing here is any void or you know, gap in between the blocks that's an eighth of an inch or bigger, we're going to hit it with this before we spray it, just to be double safe. Right now we're using our Dimonic 100 caulk to seal around the penetrations before we spray. And all we're doing is just running a bead. And just kind of press it, skim it over. Skim it over. Once that skims up, we can spray over it with our tough and dry. Nice. Do I need to put uh, any caps over the holes, or does that really matter? Nope. Okay. Nope. We're not going to be spraying into those. Um, this will give us a good surface to spray over. And make sure nothing's getting through these lines. Perfect. Woo, welcome back. Everything is getting started early today. Yeah, that's how we like it. You know why? Because we got a heat advisory. Again, it's going to be 106. And so from 11 o'clock on, you're not supposed to be outside, but we will be because we probably won't finish up till like 2. But we're going to do the best we can. And we got. Privet Trucking is delivering stone again. That's actually two trucks rolled in at once. They just dumped there, dumped them there. I don't know where else he wants to dump, but we're getting a lot of rock today. And do you know why we're getting a lot of rock? Because after we spray the waterproof in here, we're going to backfill, we being Chris. And uh, it's gonna be a beautiful thing. We're gonna be able to actually finally walk around the house and get a real feel for it outside and we'll be able to start building the next floor which is what i'm most ready to do morning 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 you ready yep that's what i like to hear all right so we're going to add the throat seal to this and what this does is it lubricates the seals and packings inside of there and really that's all you got to do is squirt a little bit on there once we fire it up and that pump arm moves up we'll add a little bit more to it but from that point on, it should be good to go. Nice. Um, really won't even need to add any more unless you see excessive material coming out the top of that. Gotcha, that tells you that it's uh, not sealed up. Yep. I feel like no one does that. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's hooked right to itself. <laughs> Going up 
up and down in there. All right, so this is the Silver Plus gun that we're spraying through, and it's, it's with a 535 tip. Now with this gun, before you do anything at the tip, you wanna lock that in place, and that keeps the trigger from activating. It's basically a safety. But here, you see our, our 535 tip? Yep. Um, set up to spray right now, and this is how you switch the clean out if you get any type of clog. The 535, what that's telling us is at a foot away from the wall, you just double that five and that gives you a 10 inch fan pattern. And the 35 is just the orifice size. Okay. So that's what those numbers mean. And when you spray it, you wanna spray straight onto the wall. You don't wanna to try to reach and spray it at a big wide angle. So what <laughs> I do is I will set my grade first. And I'll try to do the full 60 mil thickness. And you see the, the rippling that we have, it starts doing that right about 60. 65 mils, okay. which is great about this product because you don't have to stop and check every time. You'll get to know exactly what you're looking for right here, but you take our our notch wet film mill gauge, place it in right there, and that's actually a little thick there. I'm up over 70 mils on that, but that's all right. Again, same thing, we're about 70 there. So it's going on a little bit thicker, but we also don't have any soaking into the into the cement because we're spraying on an ICF. All right, so if you were spraying on concrete, the concrete, of course, is gonna absorb some. Mm -hmm. I like to do my top when I, when I mark my grade line, I like to do that at full thickness if possible. That way I can stop spraying at the bottom of that. So gotcha. I'm not pushing any material up into that that would splash up. If you were going to have exposed concrete sticking out, gotcha. You don't want black stuff splattered. All it's kind of like place. making your making your outer lines and then mm -hmm. filling in the middle. Got it. And if you've got a gap, that see how we had filled all of the larger gaps, but this one that's right on the threshold of where we would want to the caulk that we'd use. Just give it a quick pre-spray and then put 60 mils on top of that. That'll fill that void just fine. Gotcha. Same path, just go back the other way. Because look at the up, underside or other side of this. Right. See how we're a little bit bare? And yeah. that's why. <laughs>
All right, so now we're down in the hole and Chris is up on the ladder doing, setting our market grade. He's gonna go around this area and do that. And then I can come back and do the bottom side. This would be a case where if we had two guns hooked to it, would it keep up with it on this stuff? Or is it only like regular paint? You, you could, it'd be right at the borderline of where two guns would work with this stuff. Gotcha. But it would. Um, the other option is they do make extension ones for this. Right. It's kind of, it's good when you can get sort of a mid-range one to give you kind of a happy medium right. of what we can spray from the bank and what we can spray down on the hole. In some of the areas where it's tight, the longer one's not going to do you any good down on the hole. So spraying with the gun is still kind of my preferred way to go unless you simply don't have access. If right. it's a, somebody as skinny as me, <laughs> sometimes the overdigs are a little tight. So. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be uh, over uh, fall. Yeah. <laughs> Like we're at the racetrack. Now we can go back and get avalanche. Yeah. <laughs>
How long does it have to cure before we do the strip drain? By the time we're done, we can easily start. Or, if you want it to be fully cured, you can do the strip drain tomorrow. It's, it's really easy to do the strip drain. Okay. Especially if you're using gravel. Yeah. So, like, if you're not doing gravel at all your step downs, you would need to run, like, a vertical piece from... Oh, yeah, this yeah. This footer where it goes down, it's going to have gravel. You just have to extend it past the footer. So any water that falls out of it, down through the gravel, into the next step. Gotcha. Hardest part is splicing two together. And I think if you gave me enough treats in about two days, I could get Dog Dog to do that part. So nice. nice. You hear that, don't you? Oh. I'm going to have to do a, a Dog Dog comparison video humans with you. Humans can oh, never underestimate humans' ability. What I'm saying, see, and see, I bought that, so now we got it. So anytime we do a job, it gives us, like I told you before, man, anything y'all can learn, that just gives you something else to do, which is great. Yeah. The biggest thing about this is setting up the thing and making sure we clean it when we're done so it don't turn into a brick. That's really...
good getting up that thing. The waterproof in my bag. Running out the last little bit of it. That's how it's going out good too. 50 gallon drum to come down this far so it's so far. How's that for efficiency? We're done. Pretty much was uh, about eight when we started spraying and about 11.30 when we stopped, including water breaks and everything. So there you go. So it sprays on brown, dries black, as you see. And uh, yes, yeah, all the way around. So in our case, the way I did the basement, see this is how when things start making a little more sense and early on, there's just no way I can explain why it's this way and get it across well. I'm probably just too dumb for that, sorry. But I try. So, our floor is 16 inches higher than the foundation. We're gonna put the strip drain on here, like out here, this patio and everything. We don't have to worry about any of that. The level inside of the floor is higher than any of that. This is the drain star. We're gonna put this on tomorrow. 
because it's just too hot. It's 106, so we're uh, we're gonna just working in the mornings and the evenings. So there you go. So that dimple will go out in our case, and it gets attached to the uh, to the wall. We don't have to do anything crazy because we've got the Nadura screws. We already have our strips in the wall that we can screw to. So we don't have to do any extra with that. We don't have to use a gun to shoot a fastener in or anything. It'll just screw right to that. And uh, yeah, we'll roll that all around tomorrow. That'll be complete tomorrow. And I've got to get, the only thing I didn't get yet is the adapters that where that drains out turns into four inch. In which case we'll come on this side, we'll come through here and just tie into wherever we're gonna run that one. My mason is coming today or tomorrow and we're gonna go ahead and move forward with doing the CMU part, which is concrete block of the retaining wall that's gonna come off of here. We won't finish the stone on it yet, of course, but uh, I wanna go ahead and get that done because I wanna get all the backfilling I can complete. So we'll get, uh, get that kind of mapped out, which is pretty close. That's about what's gonna be. He brought me some screenings. Uh, I'm putting that over top of all the pipe. Some will be doing that next before the next storm comes in, so I can get that up. And uh, yes, we didn't need it here either, so we can go ahead and backfill all that. Uh, we went ahead and we did do a little bit here. Came in a little further than we even needed to. So this kind of shows you the elevations, uh, what we're gonna have for elevations when we're done. Yeah, so this will kind of just slope away here. Another retaining wall goes there for these set of steps there. There you go. So that's done. Complete. Quickness. Done correctly. You know, Chris is the uh, installer, trainer guy for the whole, uh, I know at least the East Coast, it might be the country, we'll ask him. But. So that's all done. Uh, went ahead and sent the guys home too. I was like, you know, it's hot, no sense in knocking that out today when we know we can, no sense in knocking that out uh, today in the scorching heat when they just come in the morning. Well, that was easy. Yeah, yeah, that's one word for it. But <laughs> Beats the hell out of rolling it on. Absolutely. Forget that. That, that pump sprayed like a champ whenever you had to adjust the pressure on Man, it. so nice. So. I love it when good people send you good stuff at a fair price, you know? Now I just got to go into business though to be able to. Yeah, yeah another 15, 20 of those and you have it paid off. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Well, got anything else? It's... Right. I don't think I filmed, uh, probably on time lapse, but to uh, prepare the equipment because you always got to clean it right away. And we just yeah, ran. Well, if you're using it regularly, like if you were to spray that again next week, you could just let the pressure off, wind the hose up, and you'd really? be good to go. Absolutely. Huh. Okay. If it's going to set a while is when you want to flush it out. And what gotcha. you could even do is, if you know, at this point it's good to go, but you could run it till it's coming out clear or just even, you know, soapy at that point. But it's, we were blowing wow. bubbles out, so there's no point continuing yeah. to flush. But yeah. Yeah, we start blowing bubbles with the gun. So the guys just... who are spraying every day almost never clean out their stuff. Oh, wow. I, I tell people, if you're going to spray within the next three weeks, you're above freezing temps. Yeah. You're good to go. Let the pressure out and just... Wow. Okay, well, that's good. The next one. Good info to have. The Drain Star, we feel good about it. Uh, so who do I need to get the adapters from to um, go to the 4-inch? Okay, we'll figure that out. No problem. Um, you can just run it long. Yeah, because I'm figuring I'll have one at this corner and one at the other corner, yep. right? That's it. Yep. So and just and it's the same thing. You'll just hook the adapter through here. Okay. You know, peel this back. Hook the adapter in here. Pull that back. Put that back in place. Wrap it with some duct tape. And same thing. If you were to start with one, just wrap your edges with duct tape. Just so we're oh, not getting gotcha. stuck in here. Gotcha. And it's. That's it. You could use something way fancier than duct tape if you want, but there's absolutely no need because it simply needs to survive the backfill. Right. All right. Well, I think we're going to have no issues with uh, water. We kind of double drained it and we've got, we're filling rock in uh, pretty high. Pretty much about till you get around back, it's going to be probably be as high as the we put the spray close. Well, I guess we need a little bit down for our topsoil, but yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, Give Mama Bailey's flowers something to, to grow out of. 
Yay. <laughs> so the ducks can come up and eat it. Dog, dog, something to dig up. Yeah. Yeah, dog, dog don't care. The ducks and the chickens. The chickens will dig up our bushes. Oh. Yeah. So you got to get the right, you got to have the right bush. Yeah. We could have used dog, dog. Huh? We could have. I mean, I don't, you know, she's. You could looked good. It could have made him Dalmatian. She says it's too hot. And yeah. so, like, if you're having trouble fitting under there, yeah. you want your top flush and it runs out a little bit on the bottom. Okay. Gotcha. So, so make, yeah, the top needs to be against the, against, the, so against your foundation. Pulled out during backfill. Got it. All right. And then, like I said, every now and then just put one at the top, one at the bottom. But for the most part, this, I think it's going to be adhered better than fasteners because typically with fasteners they're doing about every four foot right four to six feet so you're doing it every two foot with a screw you know exactly so yeah i feel like we're gonna uh i think we're gonna be pretty good yeah so i would just have them take this end i'd probably you know wrap that in with duct tape if you're not tying it into anything both ends right well once you start the other end will tie into the next but I would just take one, unwind it, and take it around, and then just have somebody feed it down to them in the hole. Right. You can stretch it out and run it in the hole. You can try it both ways and see what they see, like better. There we go. See, we'll, we'll try it both ways so that you don't have to. So you can get the right way. All right, well, huh. Well, that was quick. Like I said, yeah. nice, uh, nice, easy trip. Now you can get back home. Yeah. You could probably drive home faster than you're going to get home uh, waiting on the flight. It'll be close, but I'm going to go and destroy some hotel washcloths with the yeah see if we can't yeah you need some <laughs> my deposit no i we we covered i uh, got baby oil yeah on there yeah i did most of mine see yeah that's nice it's, makes you not want to ever put baby oil on a baby yeah I, we'll strip anything we do not recommend baby oil on babies now no nope, no nope. I, I am against that but it does great at taking uh, solvents off of your skin asphalt based asphalt. emulsions from you yeah emulsions nice all right appreciate it no problem. Thank you. See you, you soon. Don't yeah. worry. There'll be more. You look like you're ready for an interview. <laughs> it's almost warm, ain't it? Yeah. Woo! It's a warm, man. How many rolls have y'all used so far? Is this the second roll? Oh, and you got all the way around to the other side. So where three. First, yeah. First step is. Yeah, so probably three rolls to do it all. Oh, that ain't bad. So, uh, yeah. So the guys have been getting this installed. How's it going, Jeff? Going good, bro. You getting ready to be out of the shade, though, I'm sorry. Oh, I know, dude. Yeah, this comes around here, and it's got the little dimples in it that we showed yesterday, and water hits it, and uh, so when the, it's just to hold it till we backfill, and then we backfill, it pushes up against it. And then water just trips to the bottom and runs through the little drain, did the black. Okay. So yeah, so you're done on this side. Just uh, cut it, like I said, about two feet, and I'll trim it once I get the adapter that turns it to four inch. And then on the other side, you don't even come around the uh, curved area. Yeah. When you come off the side of the den at that corner, that's it. And it, it kind of turns and then that's it. So it, we'll, well, I'll show you. That way you know where it is. But yeah, we can walk all the way. Yeah, so one row went all the way to yeah, over there somewhere. To, the, to this wall right here on the theater room. Out right there at the door. Yeah, she so just... Put that up against there. And you know, as long as this has been open, even through the winter, we never have water running out through the dirt. Yeah. So, it stays pretty dry up here anyway. This is just really more for rainwater than anything. We don't really have the water table problem up on this hill. So it came around. Oh yeah, did a little connection there. What well, just overlapped it and pushed it together, right? Yep. And that's it. So keep on keeping on. So down there, and uh, I'm gonna fly the drone. Hang guys, see any drone shots in a while. And uh, they're close to finishing up, and I bet they're happy too, because it is uh, it is brutal out here once again. It has been, man, it's been brutal for seems like two months. <laughs> so. There you go. Oh yeah, they even double screwed it all the way. Nice. 
they went, man, overachievers right here. Love it. Hey, Jeff, when you get to those pipes, uh -huh. just uh, tuck it under the pipe uh -huh. and let the bottom stick away from the uh, from the wall is fine. Yeah, there you go, just like that. And see, you just let it, that way it'll flow out. That's it, perfect. All right, appreciate everybody once again. Uh, inspections Monday, and once they sign off on that, Chris is coming Tuesday, and we're gonna start backfilling. Very much looking forward to that. We're gonna figure out the retaining walls and stuff so we can kind of get this looking relatively close to how we want it, and then I'm gonna start on the next floor. All right, so they're going to do the other side, and we'll be done. I can't wait. The day is shining. I can't wait. There ain't no hiding. And I'm dancing on a new horizon. I can't wait. I can't wait no more. I found my heart a new beginning. And I'm breathing. In its melodies I spent so many days of wishing But now life keeps playing symphonies And better days ain't on the way Yeah, they here Look around without the clouds The sky is clear I can't wait The day is shining to spinning and there's music singing in the streets when every song you see is electrifying you'll hear them speaking harmony and better days ain't on the way yeah they look around the good we found will disappear i can't wait the day is shining 